I'm Rob Lacuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Jessica Rhodes, Executive Producer on the Post-Apocalyptic Limited Series Station Eleven. Jessica, I loved how this series made me feel. Um, it's about an eclectic group of survivors who live on after a severe pandemic. Um, there's a real emotional intelligence to it that I really honestly wasn't expecting. And I'm, I would love to know what made you want to be a part of it? Thank you, first of all. I think that the way this show makes the audience feel is the thing that we focused on the most. We talked about the most. Um, it meant everything to us. So that is such a specific and um, perfect thing to say. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I was sent Patrick Somerville's first couple scripts and I fell madly in love with them. Uh, and so I had the pleasure of having a little bit of a different experience, which is reading scripts and then Emily's amazing novel and then more scripts. So I think in some ways that made the experience for me um, not a linear one when it relates to like, I feel like from the moment I read Patrick's first script in 2019 to you know, watching the final mix, I, I feel like I was in the same feeling the entire time. It was just wow. a, yeah. Um, isn't it funny how as a producer for, for television, these things take such a long time. Like you've come on board years ago and we're still talking about it. Um, and also- But we have a global pandemic in the middle. So there's We that. had this thing that kind of <laughs> just interrupted it all, which, we, you know, it's actually, let's, let's talk about that because everybody on the show- has a different perspective on how the pandemic interrupted things and then made it so weird and uncanny and creepy that you were dealing with a pandemic in real life. And we, it's a shared experience that we all have gone through, but also portraying it or depicting a more extreme version of a pandemic on screen. What was that like for you to come back after production had shut down and realize what, what are we doing? Well, I I, I don't want to sound self and the thing about the show is right you get you talk about feels really fast you talk about art very deeply and I think that we experienced what the entire rest of the world experienced which was locking down closing down and then trying to say how do we move on how do we rebuild how do we figure out how to do this thing that we love so much and makes us whole in this new world. And so the strangest thing I think about making sharp objects, I don't think I knew this at the time, by the way, this is retrospectively because I remember those days where we were trying to just make sure everyone was safe and how do we do it safely? We made all these moves to make it safe. And then I remember that first day we were on stage to do, uh, came to the set to do uh, a camera test. And it was the first time back, right? And so you had your mask and you had your face shield and you had tested and you just didn't know if this was going to work. Could you do this? Could you drop your guard to be sensitive and emotional and, and intuitive enough to do your, your creative job? And after a few minutes, we all just started doing it. We all just started doing our jobs. And we, you know, we were so enthusiastic. We would sometimes get too close together and then someone would have to say, no, 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 back up, back up, you know, keep your distance. And, and, I, and it was moments like those again and again and again for six months that for me, so much of what making this show in a pandemic was about was how much community has to rebuild, how much you need other people and how much performance and creation and artists actually are the thing that help you get through it. Uh, and so I think that's in the show. You know, I think that the show would have always, always been brilliant. Patrick's scripts are amazing. All the writers are incredible. The directors are incredible. Emily's books are incredible. The actors were like, it would have been phenomenal. But I think somehow every single artisan on the show, every craftsperson, every actor, every, everyone having the same sense memory and then having to put their fear aside because the making the thing was actually what they needed to do. Um, I think that seeped into the DNA of the show. Yeah, every single person that I have spoken to who, have, who worked on this show, there's just this passion 
that I don't often come across, honestly. Like people were really proud of this. And uh, I think it kind of not only did it make the audience feel something so positive, but I think it also kind of changed all of you in some way as well. It's really strange and inexplicable to me. But anyway, um, I want to read something that you wrote recently for Variety because it's about your experience as um, producing television in this extremely challenging time that we're living through. I really love this. You said, for all the connections this virus has severed, it may have forced us to carve out solutions that will ultimately increase our human bandwidth and allow us to nurture all the connections that matter. I love that. That is so true for everything, not just TV production, yeah. but everyone. Uh, and I'm going to bring that into my own team. Um, did that ring true for your time on Station Eleven in particular? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, I think, I think also because, uh, so for me personally, personally, for the first time in my career, I moved my entire family with me to Toronto to make the show. Uh, I'd always popped back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just that's what it was, and you do the job. Um, but because we shot in Toronto and there was a closed border, and because there uh, was a two-week quarantine, like a legit can't leave your house for two-week quarantine, uh, it became very clear that there was no way I could be on set the entire time. Like we all decided I needed to be. Uh, it was a big show, right? Executing Patrick's vision. There were so many moving pieces and we had phenomenal directors and phenomenal line crew. We had so many amazing people, but like it needed another human just on the ground the whole time. And so that, that had to happen. And so at a certain point we realized the only way to do it was for my family to come with me. And I think that was the most personal experience. I think it's another part of, you know, station 11 for me, just me was that I really found that being, it was the first time that I didn't put the part of being a mom to the side, that that was like a piece over yeah. here. And it kind of just became, and during that, I think Patrick himself pointed out that so much of the way I produce is mother adjacent. Like there is a part yeah. of me that just wants to make sure all of these incredible artists have what they need to create, feel safe physically, was a big thing in COVID obviously, but always physically, but then emotionally, intellectually, there's all these ways that you're trying to just keep humans safe so they can be creative and grow and thrive. And I think for me, that's part of what Station Eleven was. It was realizing that like you, are not, you don't have to be different people in every aspect of your life. You can actually be the same person. Yeah. You don't have to compartmentalize. You can bring you to whatever you're doing. And it, make it, and I, it makes it better. I know? think so. And I, but I do think that happened to a lot of other people, <laughs> you know, bringing Zoom work from home into people's lives. All of a sudden kids were running by, yeah. life was happening. And you yeah. just, you saw a different side of it. I think it was amazing. And I, and I hope that doesn't change. Same. I, um, you know, that's, it's one of the few silver linings of what we've been through this is the, the new way of working and the way that we were able to meld both worlds that we have together. Um, you know, I often hear from people in the industry how much they admire the show for its ambition, uh, its, its emotional intelligence, as I mentioned, and, and, and ultimately how hopeful it is. Um, I, I, I really honestly do. I, I don't often hear that from people, your, your peers. Um, it's a show about a cataclysmic world decimating event. And yet I can't recall a show that is this life affirming. It's, it's really crazy. Um, what is it about the story that you think um, resonates with people, particularly people who are working in the film and television industry? It's so interesting because you're, you're absolutely right. And the amount of people, I've made a few shows that people really, really responded to, that people have really loved or people have really uh, been addicted to. Uh, there's something about this show, and I think part of it was when it, when we were able to release it and that they were home with their families. Um, but I got calls from agents standing in their living room with their parents telling me how much it just affected them. I mean, that, it, like, it just, so I think part of it is when people saw it and part of it is that um, I think the show allows people to grieve and ex kind of, 
explore the trauma that they have been through. Again, I oh, I think the show would have would have always been special and would have always connected with people. But the people who watch our show, who find our show, have lived through a seismic trauma. E even yeah. if they are healthy, even if everyone they love is healthy, we've been severed from community. We've we've had to, especially uh, as parents or caretakers, and that's caretakers of their people of their own parents and their friends, yeah. have had to walk through the world every day and just keep going and have to believe it's going to be okay because you have to keep the people around you comfortable and safe and co people have done it with coworkers, people have done it, people have been through this. So the Jeevan experience of, I didn't choose this and yet I have to keep walking each day forward is something people have experienced. And so I think Station Eleven allowed for an audience before they even realized what was happening to finally break through their own compartmentalization to deal with the grief and the you know the trauma that everyone collectively, whether or not you believe in therapy or not, is going through, has gone through. And then we were able to remind, I think, the audience that it is okay to need other people, that community val is valuable, that it's okay to really want to go to that live music show, even though you're not sure if it's safe because art matters and feeling music in a group of people is what makes us feel good. And it's not flip and art isn't, you know, I think that the show lives in that space. Um, yeah. So, you know, I know people cried a lot uh, towards the, uh, end of our show, but there were a lot of happy tears too. And there was a lot of catharsis. And um, the thing I hear is that people kind of stay through, you know, Patrick was so careful with lies on our team, like choosing the music over the credits. Everything was so intentional, but I think people were able to sit there in their feelings a little longer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when Jeevan and Kirsten finally reunite, and then agree to see each other again when the traveling symphony comes back. Like, yeah, I was speechless. And just talking about it now, I recall how I felt and it was so satisfying. Um, I don't need to see anymore now, I'm good. I mean, if Patrick and you and the rest of you decide to make it another series, wonderful. But it was so cathartic, as you mentioned, and yeah, really special. Uh, and, I, and I really, really want to touch on how this show explores how art sustains us as human beings. We can't live without it. And these survivors certainly couldn't. And that was what, that was their reason for being. Um, so what, what did you think about that? Now that time, you know, this show is long gone in your, in your memory, I suppose, but what do you take away from that looking forward now that you're working on other projects and how important it is to, to bring a creative vision to life? I mean, I, I wake up every day so committed to the vision of our showrunner, you know, whatever the show we're working on is. That's to me what uh, we live and breathe. I think that Station Eleven taught me on a, on a real level that if your showrunner, you know, can be as generous as Patrick was allowing other people to author his vision, to give people space to actually grow their own ideas and to feel like they can make mistakes and kind of shoot in the dark or, or shoot wide and you'll bring them back if it's wrong, you know, but like that there's not that, that there's a real safe arena. I think because we were able to invest people so much in the world building of, of the show. They, they, it was so personal that if people can get inside the art themselves, uh, it's so much more fulfilling to the creators. And then also, you know, I think for the audience. And so I guess my takeaway is um, it's just good leadership. Uh, it's, it's learning from, I think, some of the things we did right on, on Station Eleven, uh, which was the product also of everyone being quarantined together and there being the only community. It's how the only way we could do it. Yeah. Um, 
but I'd, I'd like to learn from that. I'd like to learn how good it felt to have people feel so responsible and so seen inside the creative process of the show. Yeah, and what you're talking about doesn't happen if you don't have that trust. Um, as a producer, what do you bring to the table? Because some people, lay people who don't work in the industry may not completely fully appreciate what producers do in supporting the creative vision, shepherding it, guiding it. I mean, give us an example of, um, of what might have kept you up at night because of, you know, you, you want to make sure production is going to continue working smoothly. Yeah. What are you doing as producer on a show like this? It's different every day. Um, and every producer does it differently and there's different forms of us, you know, on, on this, on this series in particular, there were so many unique worlds, so many. And, and I think the success of the show is how siloed those worlds were. I mean, the funniest thing is by the way, because we were shooting in a lockdown, people weren't socializing outside. So like, for example, a lot of the actors didn't meet or work together until we were at the airport. So they were like, you know, so Mackenzie and Danny were over here and Himesh, right? Like, and so when they finally converged together, that was very much on the screen. But I, but that's also how our worlds were and our episodes were. Each episode, the directors had very contained separate worlds. And so on this show, um, a lot of it was going, you know, obviously back and forth, making sure everyone had what they needed at all times, including the actors. But a lot of it was, for example, building the airport. The airport's established by Lucy Cherniak in episode five, but it obviously has to support the work in the later episodes that Jeremy Podeswa was shooting. And then, and also Helen Shaver had some scenes too. So we had three incredible directors working in the same location and the transition between the 20 years had to track and give everyone what they needed. So every decision you had to make sure people were a part of, but someone had to make a lead decision. And then Ruth, I'm an amazing production designer, obviously. <laughs> and and uh, Alan on her, everyone had to be covering all the episodes simultaneously. So a lot of the job of being um, an executive producer on this show was stepping back and trying to look at the, the globals, you know, and being able to say, that's going to work here and that's going to work here. I think the other thing, you know, I found my, I had a few, I became obsessed with the, with the wagons. Um, Patrick would tease me because I was like, look, there's a lot we're changing from the book. And I don't think, I think the feeling of the book matches the feeling of the show. So I think audiences will be thrilled, but the only way we can let the audience down is if there's a few key things that they dreamed up in their mind from reading the book. And this was their shot to see it. And if we let them down, I, I'm that I don't know that we can do. So I, I spent, I was, I mean, the wagons are a um, kind of a miraculous feat of movie magic because not even movie magic, movie making, because <clears throat> when you, it's first, you have the simple idea that they're vehicles that have been, you know, uh, repurposed, rescraped, reused, but then they have to be drag uh carried by the horses and then horses can only carry a certain amount of weight well you can only back you can't back up with horses by the way you just got to go in a circle so then it's a locations <laughs> issue it's a vehicle right so being a producer is leaning over all the logistics but then at the end of the day it doesn't it only matters what it looks like it i mean you have to make sure that works too that's so fascinating i wish we had more time just to go uh, i really just congratulate you on some beautiful work on this show um, and, and all the best for your future projects. Thanks for your time today. Thank you so much.